Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to do a This Year in Perfume. It's going to be on the year 2018. Now, I did get a haircut today, uh, and the lady just kept on cutting. She did not stop. Uh, and so, hopefully it'll look better tomorrow once I actually try to style it. But today, it is what it is. So, um, sorry for the messy hair. But uh, it we're going to do a late night video, and it'll hopefully look better tomorrow. All right, so let's get into the year 2018. So if you guys have been kind of following, you know, the, the channel's progression, uh, I've come up with a couple main video ideas. And it is a little sad to see this one start to go away, although uh, we're very close to modern times. And um, I have a lot of decants that I kind of want to talk about. Some I've done reviews on, some I want to do reviews on and talk about. And... Um, you know, I do have a couple bottles, but you're going to notice that the, the full bottles are shrinking. It's not like some of the previous years. Uh, 2018, and, you know, one idea, though, that someone did give me to maybe keep the video idea going, because remember, this is all about finding ways to talk about fragrances with you guys in an interesting and exciting way. And I like having these just, you know, almost like friendly dialogues, I guess we could call them, where... You know, we're just kind of laid back and having this conversation, almost like I'm trying to talk to a friend. And uh, before we get into this, though, um, I am going to do Scent of the Day, but I want to share this idea that this person mentioned. Uh, they said, you've been ranking everything else. Why don't you rank your This Year in Perfume videos? And I was like, that would be a task. Rank what the best fragrances are of each year. What do you guys think? Let me know if you think that's just insane or too much or... But uh, maybe two extra, I don't know. But uh, let me know what you think. But I want to show you guys something. I'm going to reapply this because uh, because why the hell not? Um, and I wore this to work today. And uh, I'll do a full review on this before this little decant is gone. But uh, yesterday I wore a perfume called Ensar Oud E01 Assam. And for 50 mils, that thing is $1,000. And I thought, man... You know, it was nice. Go watch my review or early impression, whatever you want to call it. I enjoyed it, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? This just doesn't move me. I don't know why. It just doesn't. It has all the high-quality materials. It has the special Sultan Caboose uh, Ambergris and all this amazing stuff. The Oud is really nice, all this stuff, but it didn't move me. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to wear my cheapest Oud fragrance, just to compare. I just wore one of the most expensive fragrances I've ever put on my skin. $1,000 for 50 mil is not cheap. <clears throat> Let's see how Fakhat Lil Rajal from Rosasi wears today. And you know what? I've enjoyed it. I would even say I enjoyed it just as much as Ensar Oud E01 Assam. You guys might think I'm insane. But uh, I, honestly, I, I just have this, you know, I just enjoy these type of fragrances. I guess I don't need uh, the ultra rare exclusive, you know, sometimes something like this just works. And today this just worked. I, I loved wearing this today. You guys will probably laugh because it's a it only comes in a 50 mil bottle, I think. Uh, and I think it's like 20 bucks or something. And I think you can still even buy this fragrance. Uh, and it's saffron, oud, bergamot, jasmine, cardamom, rice, geranium, sandalwood, musk, patchouli, leather, and oud. And I really like the patchouli and the dry down. There's a little bit of barnyard facet in the opening, but it's not too bad. I mean, if you've worn stuff like the Night or some of these Bortnikoffs or Aries Le Dore's, uh, this is not going to, um, this is not going to put you off. There is a little bit of sweetness to it. And it's it's nice. I mean, it doesn't smell like a twenty dollar fragrance. I it's crazy that I enjoyed wearing this just as much as the Ensar fragrance. That just goes to really show, I guess, that uh, you know how much you spend on a fragrance doesn't necessarily make or break the perfume. It's about how much you love and you love really enjoy, and how much enjoyment you get out of the fragrance. Because when you're a connoisseur, you're not wearing fragrances like for the same reasons that most people are wearing fragrances. Most people are wearing fragrances because they want to get compliments or they want to get a girl or, you know, whatever the normal reason I guess someone would wear a perfume is. Um, for us, we're wearing it 
for different reasons. We're wearing it for the enjoyment that it gives us internally, right? And so I just thought I would do a little experiment and it worked out beautifully. And shockingly, but beautifully. So, Fakat Lo Rajal, which sounds like I'm cursing at you, but I think it means only for men uh, is the name. And it is a very masculine fragrance, but uh, I did really enjoy that. That was my scent of the day. All right, let's get into 2018. Uh, I have some uh, quick little samples I want to discuss because you will see some early impressions on these perfumes. So this is a fragrance from Versace, and it's called Eros Flame from 2018. All of these are going to be from 2018, obviously. And Eros Flame, um, it is... I guess if you forced me to wear an Eros fragrance, you said, Ramsey, you're wearing an Eros fragrance, I guess I'd say fine, give me Eros Flame. That's kind of how I feel about this. It's this spicy, sweet. There's a note of Chinoto, which is very interesting. Um, I think this might be one of the only fragrances I've seen this in. This and maybe a couple other fragrances, This, uh, which is a special type of bitter orange, they say, which is very interesting because the gentleman who um, worked on Eros Flame also worked on One Million, and I think One Million has that, you know, blood orange thing going on, so he did an interesting take on um, Eros Flame, and you know what, it has this, um, it has this pepperwood note, which is also a synthetic note that is found in a couple other decent fragrances, Herod uses pepperwood, I don't mind Herod. It's one of the Parfum de Marley's I can actually stand. Uh, Comme des Garçons Black, which is something that's on my potential full bottle list, um, uses it. So, you know, uh, I will do an early impression on Eros Flame. Although many from my channel who, who uh, watch this probably will not be interested. I think it's good to kind of branch out and do different type of uh, early impressions, you know. Uh, okay, so next in 2018, we're going to talk about a George Zahara fragrance. I actually don't have any in my collection, believe it or not. Uh, I really wanted a full bottle of that Tabak that um, that came out last year, I believe it was. Uh, but I never pulled the trigger on it, and this is the only little amount of juice of a, of a Zaharoff that I own. It's called a Zaharoff Signature. So Signature Porum, and so I will do a video on this one day soon as well. 2018 it came out, it's a um, uh, Zanzibar Black Pepper, Provincial Blue Cedar, French Lavender, Guatemalan Cardamom, and Pear. Uh, I always love it when these houses get very specific with the ingredient. It makes it feel, you know, I think they're just trying to make you feel like, oh, we're using exclusive Zanzibar Black Pepper. I don't know how true this, you know those kind of note listings or breakdowns are, but that's what it that's what it's listed as. Khalil ginger, Virginian cedar, Indonesian oud, Florentine iris, pimento leaf, Canadian fir balsam, Austri Australian sandalwood, Indonesian patchouli, black amber, Chinese myrrh, and Ethiopian frankincense. And you know, for a hundred bucks or whatever a bottle of Zaharoff signature goes for now, this is a good perfume for just a someone that wants kind of a nice easy to wear, you know, signature scent. That would be a good signature scent. Okay, next is a imaginary author's fragrance, which I've done a couple of these early impressions from this house, uh, and this is called Sun Drunk. So, Sun Drunk is uh, a citrusy, fruity take. It does have rhubarb. Go watch my stream that Jonathan and I did from a couple days back. Um, Jonathan's amazing. I can't wait for his channel to be up and running, but um, he mentioned how much he loves the note of rhubarb. And there is rhubarb in Sun Drunk with neroli, honeysuckle, rose water, and orange zest. So it's definitely one of those warmer weather fragrances, but um, I'll do an early impression on that one day soon as well. And then here's one from 2018 that I actually already have a video on my channel up uh, you can go check it out right now. Such an insane fragrance. This fragrance makes me smile every time because of how nuts it is. This fragrance is like a this fragrance is like a maniac that just broke out of the insane asylum. And the first thing he went to do is he went to the costume store to buy a Bugs Bunny outfit. And he's gonna run around the street wearing a Bugs Bunny outfit because he is just absolutely mental in the head. This fragrance is nuts. 
Uh, it's smoke, angelica, gin, licorice, juniper, Sichuan pepper. Listen to this note listing. Smoke, cypress, pine needle, castorium, labdanum, cade, costus, violet, iris, more smoke, dry woods, amber roam, cedar wood, sorry, sandalwood, and musk. But it just gives off this vibe of, you know, you are riding a ship in the 1800s, a merchant ship, um, and you're you're smelling these some somewhat decaying packages. You know the the wood is uh, has gotten wet over the journey, or you know there there are rats on the ship that have kind of uh, tore open the grain bags, and it's kind of spilled everywhere. And there's smoke from the cannon cannons that just got fired because they were testing them to make sure they still work in case like pirates come and try to attack them. It's that kind of fragrance nuts and yet i love it uh that beaufort house i really want to dive into and um you know i might even do a couple blind buys but but we'll see i'm gonna i'm gonna pull back on my buying i have a couple more bottles coming um but i'm gonna try to take it easy i got a great deal on an amouage so i got a full bottle of amouage coming i've got some zoologist uh some zoologist discovery atomizers they call them coming so i've got uh, a decent amount of stuff Speaking of zoologist, um, I actually ordered five. They have a, a special where you get five 10 ml decants or seven and a half or whatever their deal is for like a couple hundred bucks. Not bad at all. And um, two of them are from 2018 that are in that hall, T-Rex and Hyrax. So I have those two coming along with three others, which will remain a mystery. Um, but yes, I'm very excited to dive into that Zoologist brand. Okay, so next is another early impression that I have coming very soon. This is thanks to Will, uh, and this is called Bourbon Eau de Cologne by Henley. Henley is his favorite perfumer, I think he told me. Um, and this is this roasted oak note with bourbon, vanilla, bergamot, tonka bean, labdanum, and musk. But that roasted oak note is very unique. And... Um, I'm really interested in these Henleys, you know, he seems to be, as far as like indie perfumers go, he seems to really be at the top of the quality, and he, he also seems to, um, he also seems to really be a, for a self-taught perfumer, he really seems to know the ins and outs, nothing ever seems out of place in his work, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, and then in 2018, there was a perfume that he put out. So I've got two early impressions from Henley for you guys. Uh, and this one is called Blonde. Now, Blonde uh, is a floral, leathery, fruity take. But the fruit, uh, or in this case, it's actually a melon. It's cantaloupe. How insane is that? But there is Osmanthus Absolute, which I did an entire video on Osmanthus. You can go check that out. Basically, Osmanthus gives off this nectarine, peachy, leathery, animalic-like vibe. Um, and it's slowly turning into one of my favorite florals. I love osmanthus with orris root, another one of my favorites. I love iris or orris or, you know, orris butter or any, you know, orris concrete, any type of orris, give it to me. I love it. Uh, sandalwood musk and ambergris. So uh, interested in checking out more from this house. And then a new house, which I've never done a video on yet, but I do have a couple of these uh, little samples that I want to talk about on the channel soon. From 2018, this is from the House of Juice Box, and they're inspired by artists and music. As you can see, their samples are supposed to look like uh, little records. And this is called No Rules. So No Rules was created by Antoine Lee, my, uh, probably one of my favorite current day perfumers. I love the fact that he goes against the grain and I love the fact that he, um, you know, that he just basically gave up almost his livelihood to, you know, follow his heart, to follow what he wanted to do in the industry. He had a cushy job with one of the big oil houses. You know, he created in, in the early 2000s, he created a couple um, pretty famous designers. I think one was an Armani. And, um, and then he just said, you know what? This is not where I want to be. The lack of originality is too boring for me. He didn't want to play that game. So he left, went, started making fragrance for 
a Talib de Orange, and people thought he was out of his gourd at that time because, you know, back then, those kind of uh, niche fragrance houses weren't seen as something to look forward to, to do by a big name perfumer. The big names wanted to be at the firms and the oil houses where he left, you know, making stuff for Armani and Dior and Prada and all that stuff. And uh, he just said, it's not for me. So Antoine Lee gets a huge salute and a tip of the cap. And, um, but he made no rules and I'm excited to smell it. And what's really exciting about it is uh, there's a vinyl note in it. And I've always, and I found this connection very interesting because there's a vinyl note in Eugene's fragrance, which Antoine Lee made for him for his new brand called Les Abstraits. It really feels like there's a little bit of a vinyl note in there. Even though there isn't one listed, I get a little bit of a vinyl touch. Maybe it's from the castorium and rose and, you know, this leathery, um, resinous feel of that perfume. But uh, the fragrance that it reminded me of is a fragrance that's coming up later in the um, episode, and it's called Imitation Man. And um, But we'll get to that one later. But that one has a vinyl note in it because it's supposed to smell like Christopher Chong's interpretation of the 1970s, growing up in New York. And of course, people were still using vinyl records in the 70s. So all, all of these connections is very interesting to me. And this has leather and birch bark, and I love leather. So I'm excited to try this. Um, I don't know if I'll wear it as my scent of the day, but I will definitely do an, an early impression video on No Rules. Great name for an Antoine Lee creation too, by the way. And then one of my most hated perfumes and one of my most um, uh, brands that really makes me feel disdain, you know, in my, in my being, I just feel like a little bit of, uh, like, mm, like disdain for the house is Initio, the sister house of Parfum de Marly, and it's Oud for Greatness. And, um, thank God I only have a 15 mil decant of this stuff because this is absolutely trash. Uh, this is, uh, if you thought I was going to say good there, you don't know me. Uh, Oud for Greatness is, you know, if you want to see if a reviewer is honest, okay, in my opinion, you want to see if a reviewer is an honest man or woman, uh, go to their channel and see if they have a review for Oud for Greatness. And if they have a full bottle that was sent to them by the brand and they're up there saying, oh, this is absolutely amazing, out. Uh, they are full of it. I do not like this at all. This is the most, this is the most, a uh, pathetic, disgusting attempt at creating an oud accord I've ever smelled. It smells like they just dumped whatever the material is that all these houses use, even this, these next cheaper. I've got a clone house, a clone house coming up uh, in, in this video as well, a Latafa. And it smells like something that you would smell in a Latafa, honestly. It smells like, actually, I think the Latafa is better than this. Um, I think the Latafa I'm going to talk about is better than this, seriously. I'm not just saying that to be mean. Uh, but I would wear the Latafa over Oud for Greatness. Now, I will wear Oud for Greatness for you guys. I will bite the bullet. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna do it because I want to talk about it. But man, I uh, actually, this Fakat Lo Rajal is better than Oud for Greatness, honestly. Um, don't pay $360 for Oud for Greatness. Do not do it. I'm telling you, once you, if, if you're new to the fragrance game and you bought it off of YouTube hype, if you buy Oud for Greatness, there will come a point very soon in your journey, once your nose matures, where you will not like that fragrance. Um, that is that is for the bros and the hype beasts and, you know, the compliment dudes who think that, you know, they're going to get a compliment wearing that. It's not for people like you and me who love perfume. Uh, okay, next we're going to talk about a fragrance that I actually really liked before I knew what this perfumer also did. Uh, and it's by the house of Dolce & Gabbana, and this is a little decant, I don't have a full bottle, and it's called The One Mysterious Nights, okay? So Mysterious Night is a 2018 release, and it was uh, built by Jean-Christophe Herrault, who is now famous for creating Aventus, according to the, uh, according to the, um, the book, which, why am I drawing a blank what the book's name is? Uh, it is The Ghost Perfumer. Sorry. Ghost Perfumer. Actually, it's funny. Someone left me a comment 
uh, on my Roja on a video I did a day or two ago because I said something about leaving a comment on Roja's channel, you know, and we got into an argument about Roja being the perfumer and he's like, oh, you're one of those people who don't think Roja's the perfumer. So, I, you know, I am just asking all questions. I'm not making any claims. It's just very interesting to me, you know. It's like, um, it's like before all of this information came out against Creed, you know, if you would have said anything bad about Creed to some of the Creed heads, some of the Aventus heads, you know, Aventus is like a phenomenon. It still is. Uh, and, you know, you say some of these things to them. I And I like Aventus, and that's the difference between me and maybe someone who uh, they identify who they are with that perfume. So when you say something bad about Aventus, it's not like you're just talking about a fragrance. You're talking about their very, it's almost like you're talking about their very being, you know, and they take serious offense to it. They're way too sensitive. Um, and so I can like Aventus, really like Aventus. It was my signature scent basically for many years uh, in, in 2012, 13, uh, maybe even into 14. Uh, and, I mean, it was literally all I wore. I wore Aventus, Aventus, Aventus. Uh, and, you know, now I can, I can still really appreciate Love Aventus and say some of these other things about it. And, um, uh, but this is a great rose. There's a beautiful rose absolute in here with oud and saffron. It's Middle Eastern style, so it's very loud. It's that ambery, you know, labdanum, tonka bean, bass you know, loud, oriental, floral, Middle Eastern fragrance. But if you don't like rose, if you're a man and you've never found a rose fragrance that just does it for you, okay, I would urge you to try this. This could be the one that changes your perception of rose. Okay, next, we're going to go to an Ensar Oud, believe it or not, and I do have a full review of this. Well, not even a full review, an early impression. I wore it once because I... I, uh, with these that I just have a little bit of juice, I just do my one wear and, um, you know, talk about it and that's, that'll be my video for it. Uh, so it's not a full review, it's an early impression, but it'll give you good insight into the fragrance. And it's called EO number two. And you know what? I did like this. Um, looking back actually between the two, between this and Oud, uh, EO number one, Assam. I may have even like. I may like this even more because this I didn't like because it had that very challenging, um, very spicy opening. You know, lots of cumin and lots of uh, what smelled like turmeric. Okay, this um, this Moroccan spice bazaar smell, but it smelled very similar to. Um, Russian Adam and Arige Ladore created a perfume the year before in 2017 called Oud Picante. And uh, it gave me very Oud Picante vibes in the opening. Uh, I think I would probably wear this. Oh, I don't know. I'm torn. Um, I'm really not a fan, not the biggest fan of either of those fragrances. Uh, but I have come around to the point where I can say, you know what? Even though it's not my favorite, I have to really respect it for the fact that they try to do something challenging and different. And the musk in the dry down of this is beautiful. I will give them that. There's a beautiful, real Siberian musk, real Mysore sandalwood. So uh, you can go check out my review on EO number two. And, uh, but, but uh, one of the early impression videos I did that instantly became my favorite fragrance for a note. Very rarely do you try something new when you have a huge collection where it just jumps to the top of everything for that note. This fragrance did that. 2018, Ariz Ladore released this little gem, Malik Al Taif, uh, the king of Taif. There's a story on how they picked the Taif rose petals for Russian Adam for this fragrance. They only used women uh, because the owner of the land who had the rose, the rose farm in uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, um, found that when women's hand picks it, the delicate woman's hand, the roses smell different than when a man's hand picks it. So they only used women. They pulled each petal from the bulb. So there wasn't the green. Usually when they distill, it's the petals and the little green bulb that adds this green, um, you know, 
you know, leafy, green leafy vibe to the to the fragrance. This is pure rose petals. It's absolutely stunning. The best Taif rose fragrance I've ever smelled. And he actually traveled to India and got some Indian rose because Indian rose can also give off Taif rose vibes. Uh, and so there's Indian rose in the top with the beautiful Taif rose with saffron, real deer musk, absolute, real Mysore sandalwood. This is 100% the king of rose fragrances for me. And if you said, Ramsey, you can have a full bottle of uh, an Arise la Dore. Uh, which full bottle do you want? This would definitely be in the running. Santal Galore would also be in the running. And But the one that I really want right now is Antiquity. Antiquity is at the top of my Aris Ladore list, but man, if you're a rose lover, this is heaven, heaven. Uh, okay, next we're gonna go to uh, a decant that was sent to me by Armando. Thank you, Armando. By the way, um, everything that Armando sent me has been a home run. I mean, literally everything. I don't think he sent me a single thing I didn't like. And this is a fragrance that came out in 2018, and he sent me some amazing stuff absolutely beautiful stuff in there that he sent me. And one of them uh, was the Santa Maria Novella Po de España, and it, and it triggered this video about Russian leather versus Spanish leather versus modern leather. And this was sent in there as well. And you know, it kind of got pushed to the side. Um, it kind of got pushed to the side because of the fact that you know, the the Spanish leather from Santa Maria Novella was just an absolute knockout. Uh, hundred, one of the best leather fragrances I've ever smelled. You know, I'm a huge leather lover. And so this just kind of got pushed to the side. I wore it to bed the other day. And let me tell you something. This is a fragrance called Santal uh, Nabate Nabatea from the house of Mona de Oria. There's the, there's the fragrance, Santal Nabatea. Um, whoops, that's the name. There's the, there's the fragrance name. Uh, but it came out in 2018 and it's a spicy, woody sandalwood fragrance. And what an absolutely beautiful sandalwood fragrance this is. There are very few sandalwood fragrances now that make me, you know, feel, um, like I'm smelling extremely high quality sandalwood nowadays. Like the other day I wore Santal 33. It's absolute, so screechy and loud. And you know, it just makes you like put your ha hands in your head and just cry. Uh, and Santal Galore by Ariza Doria is probably my favorite sandalwood fragrance I've ever smelled. But um, for, a, for a mainstream house that isn't using real Mysore sandalwood or stuff like that, to just have this modern synthetic sandalwood, this is beautiful. It's And what's so amazing about it is, uh, and just off of, you know, one quick wear to bed, an hour before bed, I sprayed this on. Just an initial um, high level, how it makes me feel. Uh, Santal Nabatea um, has this crazy... Uh, dichotomy between extremely relaxing and extremely calming, you know, just woo-sa sandalwood, right, in the fragrance. But then it also has this resinous uh, myrrh and coffee. And so it's, it's almost like um, the smooth, creamy sandalwood on one side, the resinous, thicker Tonka, Apopanax, and coffee on the other side uh, with some fruits. And it's just beautiful, beautiful sandalwood fragrance. Very rarely do I come across a sandalwood fragrance now that just makes me stop and go, damn, that is a good sandalwood fragrance, and that is one. So, next on the list, uh, we are going to talk about a fragrance from the house of Les Indemodables. And uh, I really like this house. I have a lot of these little 10 ml atomizers, and this is really good musk. Uh, it is a little sweet. You know, and but um, this is a beautiful musk. If you're looking for a musk, if you like stuff like Musk Ravageur by Frederick Mall, you know, if you're a musk lover, if you like musk's Kublai Khan, um, this is a beautiful fragrance. It's called Musk de Sables. And Musk de Sables is created by Antoine Lee, okay? And 
This is so good. It's basically patchouli with real ambergris, Oris Absolute. Okay, so we're talking expensive notes here. Real ambergris, Oris Absolute, um, with benzoin, cardamom, cinnamon, bitter almond, and musk. And man, I'll tell you what. I need to wear this soon before it gets too cold. I liked wearing this one when it was a little bit um, when it was a little bit warmer, when the temperature was still kind of warm. Um, okay, next we're gonna talk about a Louis Vuitton fragrance, which I don't own any full bottles from the brand, but I did recently buy these decants off of a friend because I wanted to wear them and get to know them. And I do have a video, I do have a Louis Vuitton video that I recently did off of a sample, uh, but this one's called Ombre Nomad. And Ombre Nomad is a good perfume. It was created by Jacques Cavalier, fantastic perfumer. Uh, but it has this, it has this um, Louis Vuitton synthetic is the way that I would describe it. And you find the Louis Vuitton synthetic over and over and over again in their perfumes. It's almost like, you know, the Guerlainade, they have a beautiful uh, vanilla, Tonka, whatever, you know, the secret of the Guerlainade is that Guerlain uses. Andy Tower has that lovely Towerade that smells of ambergris and his special tincture. Unfortunately, Louis Vuitton's, uh, you know, their, um, their DNA that you find over and over again if you guys have a good name for it, by the way, let me know. The, the Vuitton odd doesn't sound too good. But um, it's it's just very synthetic. It's this very synthetic vibe about it. And But I do like the ingredients. That's oud and frankincense and raspberry. And, you know, Jacques Cavalier had a hand in um, Tuscan leather with that perfect raspberry note with leather. So he knows a thing or two about raspberry. And um, it is a good perfume. I, I like it. Would I buy a full bottle? No, absolutely not. Um, now, here's one that I am considering a full bottle of. I don't think I will, but I'm considering it. If I ever found it at a great deal, I think I would do it. Uh, it's a Carlos Benaim, and it's called The Dawn. Or actually, I take that back. Mudasir wrote the Dawn, but it's actually just called Dawn, is what is the way it's supposed to be named. Uh, but this is basically Turkish Rose with Pink Pepper, Turkish Rose Absolute with Frankincense, Oak Moss, Vetiver, Labdanum, and Oud. And you know what? The frankincense here is absolutely beautiful, and I think they do claim to use real oud, and while that may be true, the star of the show is the frankincense. This is a frankincense fragrance, to me, to my nose. Uh, it's very smoky and resinous, and I'm going to wear that and talk about it and do a full video on it one day, but um, that, that's probably full bottle worthy. If you're, if you're asking for incense, actually, I just hit me, Rich Mitch was asking me about incense fragrances, and I said incense extreme, and you know, Gucci, A Midnight Stroll, The Dawn uh, by Frederick Mall is a beautiful incense. As is, of course, Ombre Nomad and um, some of the Louis Vuittons. But uh, but yes, Dawn is, uh, I think, probably the least hyped in that line. But it is good. I, I enjoy it. And Carlos Benaim is a fantastic perfumer. Okay, now I've got a little uh, decant of this. There's no name on it because there's no name. I got it as a decant. Um, but it's from the House of Dior, and it's a Francois de Machy creation, and it's called Santal Noir. And you know what? I've heard people say this is like his Middle Eastern take on Egoiste by Chanel, which he had a hand in because he was working with Chanel at the time. And other than the fact that there's sandalwood in it, I don't see any connection uh, to Egoiste, personally. Uh, it's, it's sandalwood with ambrette and Turkish rose. And actually what it reminds me more of than Ego East is Santal Majuscule by Serge Luton's. And I think Santal Majuscule may have came out, um, a year or two before Santal Noir. And, um, let's just see. Santal Majuscule, 2012. Yeah, many years before Santal Noir. So I think Santal Majuscule influenced Santal Noir because, 
you know, um, the other thing is that Dior has this um, beautiful ambrette lying around. And that ambrette that they, that they uh, have lying around is, the reason they have it lying around is because of Dior own. So imagine Santal Majuscule with that beautiful ambrette that is in Dior own. It's okay. It's too sweet. Uh, of course it is. Uh, it's a good woody floral, you know, musk take. Um, it's not bad. It's just, would I buy a bottle? No way. But I'll, I, I'm glad I have enough juice to at least wear it and talk about it. And then, here's a here's a fragrance I actually have done a video on already. Uh, it's a Roja. We're going to do a couple Rojas here. And this is called La Oscar Pour Homme. So La Oscar apparently is a high-end, very high-end um, hotel in uh, England. And as you can see, I pretty much killed this little decant off that was sent to me by D.L. Qualia. Thank you, my friend. Um, this is a beautiful creation. Very easy to wear. It's a spicy chifra. I really liked, if, I, if memory serves, I only had a little bit of juice, enough for a full day's wear, but um, it had this beautiful vintage carnation, this spicy carnation vibe with the note of Mayflower, which was very unique, and um, Cystus Labdanum. And it dried down to this beautiful chifra base with oak moss and lab, lots of labdanum, lots of cystus labdanum. Uh, but there was a freshness to it. There was celery seed and pink pepper and galbanum. And, you know, for a fresh chifra, like if you like wearing, um, if you like wearing stuff like Oligarch by Roja in warmer weather like I do, Lascar Pour Homme could easily complement that. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I really did. No one talks about that because it's, I think you have to buy it from the boutique or maybe on Roja's website, but uh, yes, the Oscar is kind of like a hidden Roja. And then we've got a couple other Rojas, um, and the first one is a fragrance that I have a full review on, not just an initial impression, but a full review, and it's called Majestic Oud Parfum, discontinued, even though it just came out in 2018. And the reason is, is that this is more like um, majestic osmanthus floral with some animalics like castorium and civet and ambrette and oud in the base. Um, there is a big saffron note, big Middle Eastern saffron with balsams, guarjum balsam and, and cipriol uh, and patchouli and you know, the, the Rosia note breakdown, but that Osmanthus really stands out. It has that patented Rosia heart, May Rose and Jasmine from Grass and Violet and Osmanthus. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's good. I enjoy it. But if you go in expecting it to be like what Rosia says, Rosia said this is like when you walk into one of the Middle Eastern palaces full on oud and they're burning real oud. It's not. It's, uh, but it is a good perfume. Okay, next is another one that is good, but, you know, a little bit boring for my taste. Um, it's Chifra Extraordinaire from 2018. And Chifra Extraordinaire is a floral, fruity Chifra. And, you know, it is nice. I will wear this very soon and do a full video on it. The problem is when you spend two grand on a fragrance, and yes, this is a $2,000 perfume, um, you expect more than nice, okay? I expect, you know, uh, fireworks to come out of this. I expect unicorns to come visit me. I expect rainbows to start at my desk and, and you know, take me to the pot of gold. And I just get this, eh, it's nice. It's an aldehydic floral. Uh, there is a little bit of cumin and, and leather and civet in the base, but not enough for my taste. I want more. You know, I always want more. And um, this doesn't give it to me, but it is good. I mean, if you're the kind of person that doesn't like the cumin, the animalics, you don't want more, uh, this may be your, your all-time signature scent. But for me, it's just, it's not enough. Um, and then, excuse me whilst I hydrate, we have probably one of the most underrated Roja fragrances, and we talked about this a little bit on the live stream with Jonathan. Go watch that live stream. Jonathan is extremely knowledgeable, um, but this is called 
Fortnum and Mason. It's it's abbreviated in Parfumo FM, the perfume. And uh, this is one of his best fragrances no one talks about. This is full bottle worthy. Um, if I could get a... Man, if I could get a full bottle of any roses that I do not have, I think FM the perfume and PDLN1, Parfum de la Nuit number one, are on my list. But I would have to get them like, you know, 30% of the price. Not 30% off, 30% of the price. Uh, but it's a beautiful, fruity, floral chifra. Okay, Roja loves chifras. He is... Uh, to his credit, you know, Roja creates fragrances the way that I would love to create fragrances if I was in charge of, uh, a fragrance house, except instead of, um, playing it a little safe, I would love to see him do something like Eugene did and stick a giant slug of, uh, castorium in there that reminds me of Antaeus, you know, um, and he does have a fragrance that people compare to, to something like Antaeus Apex. It doesn't smell anything like Antaeus. I have a little sample. I'll talk about it one day. Eugene's fragrance is much more on the daring side, much more to my taste in that regard. But this is so posh. This is really, really good stuff. I mean, if you have some cash lying around and you don't care what happens to it, um and you just want to go spend 600 bucks on a fragrance, go get FM the perfume and you will thank me. It is amazing. And it's completely unisex. And I, I'm not just saying that. Um, I think this would smell amazing on a woman. And I think this would smell amazing on a man, uh, in my opinion. Okay, next, we're going to go to, actually, interestingly enough, now that we are done with the Rojas, we're going to go to a Roja clone. And I usually don't talk about clones on my channel. You've heard Rich Mitch say clones are theft and that's that, right? And we've kind of backed off of that stance a little bit um, because of what these houses are doing. And, you know, some of the stuff that's come out recently about the shady marketing practices and, you know, Creed putting on their website, they use a 10,000 year old maceration technique and, you know, Stuff like that has just kind of soured my attitude, uh, and so maybe I'm just a maybe I'm just a sour puss, an old guy, uh, a grouch. But this is how this is this is how I feel about clones now. I'm uh, I'm open to them. I'm open to giving you guys my opinion on them. Uh, and I did buy this just out of curiosity. It's called Zion by the House of Alexandria, and you know what? This is so good. I wouldn't buy Roja's Elysium, to be honest with you. Uh, if you wanted that DNA, I wouldn't buy that. I would just buy this. This is so good. It's a little bit different, uh, the, especially in the opening. The Roja is just full-on opulent and so, like, you know, um, especially the X-ray. The X-ray of Elysium is, um, you know, there's so much, like, citrusy goodness in the opening and it is very pleasant but it is that blue dna that's extremely boring right uh the roja feels like they're using very high quality materials and you know what it feels like uh alexandria is using high quality materials too and this is an x-ray so it's comparing to the X-ray of Elysium, not the Parfum Cologne or one of the cheaper ones. So I think this is a great value. Uh, and the scent is amazing. I mean, if you if you blindfolded someone, put this in a Roja bottle and, and sprayed it for them, they wouldn't even blink. They, would, they wouldn't even blink if you told them it was a Roja. Wouldn't even blink. Um, okay. Next, we're going to talk about a clone or a clone house, a clone brand. I don't think this is necessarily a clone of anything. It might be. It's compared to Black Incense Malachi by, by Chopard, which I've never smelled. And it's also compared to Nuit d'Issy Polaris from 2020, which I've never smelled. But that has this leathery vanilla oody thing with cypress. Um... And it's compared to Icon Absolute, which is the golden bottle, which I've never smelled. So you get the idea. But you know what? This is a damn good fragrance. You got 20 bucks in your pocket and you just want a spicy oriental that will last you until the next year. This stuff is nuclear. 
Uh, it's Latafa's Kaid. And, you know, I heard about this on uh, Zhao's channel. Zhao talked about it, uh, his Scented Moments channel. Yes, it's plastic and cheap. Uh, it doesn't feel as high quality as the Dunhill Icon bottle. But you know what? Um, for I, I'm going to spray this. Um, it's been a long time since I've worn this, and I'm wearing another, what is this, Rasasi? So we'll add Latafa to the mix. Let's see. Let me spray this, man. Yeah. You know, um, it, it does have that... So it has that, um, that Middle Eastern vibe to it. And you know what? To be fair, you get that same Middle Eastern vibe in the $600 or $1,000 um, Spirit of Dubai fragrances that I've smelled. And the only downside with this fragrance to me, the only downside is uh, the vanilla. The vanilla is way too sweet to my taste. But if you like sweet perfumes, this is awesome. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, Leather in the base, saffron, big saffron note. It's very pleasant. Um, you know, especially if you like that Middle Eastern style. You want to wear a heavy Middle Eastern fragrance. There's no reason to give Spirit of Dubai $1,800 or, you know. That's a damn good fragrance. Uh, I would love to know who their perfumers are. I wonder if it's Big Shots. I wonder if they are actually also using big names. Um... We just don't know it. Like, I wonder if someone like Julian Raskinet did this or something like that. It's, um, it, it wouldn't surprise me. It's really, really good. Shockingly good. Okay, uh, let's talk about one that's not so good. Azaro Wanted by Night. Um, you talk about sweet. This is also really sweet. It's not that it's bad. It just, it has this... I mean, you talk about synthetic. This is almost just as synthetic, if not more, than that Latafa. Um, cinnamon, cedar, cumin, tobacco, absolute, cypress, and cedar wood. And it just has that... I don't know. Uh, I, I was never as big a fan of this as the hype made it seem. Um, and I bought a bottle based on the hype. So 2018 Azara Wanted by Night, probably one of their best sellers in probably the most pathetic bottle with the revolver you, you'll ever see. But all right, let's talk about some uh, diptyques. So first we're going to talk about 34 Boulevard St. Germain. Okay, now this is a 2018 release, obviously, Olivier Peugeot did this fragrance, and we talked about him, um, we talked about Olivier Peugeot earlier in the, in the broadcast, broadcast, in the video, uh, because he did Herod and One Million, and he did that Eros Flame. Well, he also did this, okay, and this is the Eau de Parfum, uh, the Eau de Parfum, you know, if you like wearing fragrances that are hyped, like if you like wearing Aventus, or if you like wearing, um, you know, Grand Soir, or I don't know, something like that, that's kind of a hyped, easy to wear fragrance, you should check out this 34 Boulevard Saint Germain. Um, it's just basically three notes, sandalwood, vanilla, and pink pepper. And it seems extraordinarily simple, and it is, but you know what? It's a nice wear. It's, um, you, you would, if everyone out there is now trying to wear Aventus and you want to s smell something different, Rich Mitch brings up a good point. This would be a fantastic just signature scent. Um, so 34 Boulevard St. Germain, 2018. And then, um, one of the patchouli fragrances that I think is very underrated. No one talks about this one. It's Diptyque's Tempo. And Tempo is almost like a throwback to the 70s. If you like stuff like Givenchy Gentleman, and you want to smell like a niche take on patchouli like Givenchy Gentleman used to do, 
This is a beautiful Indonesian patchouli with old school violet leaf, okay? So imagine you're taking like Givenchy Gentleman and Fahrenheit from the 80s. So you have the 70s and the 80s and smashing them together and adding some modern, you know, easy to wear diptyque vibe. It's got clary sage and, and mate absolute, which interestingly enough, clary sage sometimes has this like sweaty, masculine, like sweaty vibe, you know, like a guy who just got done running laps kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's really good. I, I'm shocked more people don't talk about this. If you're a patchouli lover, uh, this is, this is worth a sniff. Speaking of worth a sniff, that, uh, uh, -huh. Ka-Aid is, uh, is for 20 bucks. I mean, damn. I, it could be worse. Um, okay. So next let's move on to the House of Rogue Perfumery. And in 2018, they put out this little devil, Dervish. Uh, and Dervish, again, I've talked about this house before. Uh, the new caps look like the old Roja caps, like they're clear and see-through, okay? The old caps look like this from this house. So apparently the whole point of this house is he used to be Rogue, right? He used to go against Ifra, go against the powers that be, and um, he was a rogue. Well, now he's not a rogue. Now he's an Ifra compliant rogue. And so the new, I would maybe, see, I've never done comparison, but I hear feedback. And the feedback I hear people say is, oh, it's not as good. It's not as enticing. You know, it's I'm when I got a sample and then I went to buy a bottle, the bottle seemed different and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I would say if you have a choice, try to find one of these older bottles okay um i've never smelled his new stuff though so i can't speak for myself but just based on kind of what i've heard uh dervish is um extremely sweet in the first hour hard to wear sweet but it has a, a lovely tobacco and civet and uh, leather uh if you can get past the first hour or two you've got an amazing fragrance on your hand so resinous and oriental um frankincense in here too but it's not really smoky, uh, not so much, maybe just a little bit, but uh, I'll wear that again very soon. And then, probably one of the fragrances that really put Mo uh, Rogue on the map in 2018 was Mousse Illumine. And you can see there's a giant lichen on the front of the bottle right there, that oak moss. Uh, and so, Mousse Illumine, this is really, really good. If you like, um, if you like those old school sharp fougeres of many decades gone by, you know, if you like your fougeres to be sharp and bracing, right? Um, the frankincense in here with the oak moss and the artemisia and the bay leaf just bring brings out this bracing quality to the fragrance. It is. I love this stuff. Now, I usually wear it in the warmer weather, to be fair. If I'm going to wear one of the Rogue fragrances in the cooler weather, it's normally Dervish or um, Tabak Vert, which is one of my favorite tobacco fragrances of all time. But uh, but yes, it is. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really good. Uh, and there's a ton of oak moss in there. You want to smell what real oak moss smells like? Check out Moose Illuminae. Okay, next... Um, next on the list, we are going to do, uh, a zoologist. So I've got this sample set coming and, but the one that I do have a full bottle of, uh, is this little bad boy, moth. Now here's the thing about moth. It is very complex and it has three or four transitions, three or four transitions. Uh, you would have to spend a ton of money to find a fragrance that does three or four transitions with this kind of quality normally. Zoologists aren't cheap, but they're not super expensive either. They're kind of in that sweet spot. And this was created by Inaba Tumu. I think she's a, a Japanese perfumer. And this has this, opens up with um, saffron and cumin and clove. And you think you've got kind of an, a handle on the fragrance. Like you think you figured it out. And it just goes whoop, right turn. And then it goes to this heavy floral, lots of florals, almost Guerlain-like. 
Heliotrope and Iris and Jasmine and Rose, Mimosa, Lily of the Valley. So you think you figured it out again. Then it goes whoop to the other way. Uh, and Oud and Smoke and Honey and Resins and Ambergris. And it is such a complex scent. And I'm shocked more people don't talk about this. So uh, that is Moth. Okay. Now this one... Um, this one I purchased because I wanted tobacco vanille, but I wanted it with frankincense, okay? So if you ever thought, man, I wish tobacco vanille had frankincense, this is one to sniff, but you know what? I enjoy wearing tobacco vanille more than this, so go figure that out. I should have just bought tobacco vanille, uh, but this is called Oud Tabak. And, you know, I, I think this is probably a $50 fragrance. I paid $100, but... Um, it's coriander, ginger, saffron, heliotrope with pipe tobacco, oud, frankincense, amber woods. And there is a lot of amber woods in here. If amber woods puts you off, stay away. Uh, bourbon, vanilla, musk, uh, nucta, cypress, and cystis labdanum. Uh, apparently, people compare it to a couple fragrances I've never smelled. Warm Black by Zara. And um, Oud Save the Queen by Atkinson's. Never smelled either. Okay, next uh, we're going to go to a Bortnikoff. And uh, if you are an Oriental fan, okay, if you like, uh, if you like things like Youth Do, or if you like Opium, this is the Bortnikoff for you. This is called Mysterious Oud. And Mysterious Oud is an Oud take on an Oriental. A beautiful oriental. It is very good. You know, the apopanax, the tolu balsam, the labdanum, the vanilla and the base give it that resinous, spicy oriental dry down. But you get the oud. Um, there's multiple types of real oud in here. There's castorium. Um, it's kind of ambery and resinous, and it's really good. This time of year is perfect for a fragrance like Mysterious Oud. Um, there is the official note listing if you get the urge to pause it and read that. Um, yes, yeah, very good. You know, I've got two cheap fragrances on my hands right now. I've got Fakat Le Rajal right here, and I've got this Kayet here, and I'm enjoying them both. It's insane. It just goes to show you do not have to spend a ton of money to, to enjoy uh, your fragrances or to, to participate in this hobby. Okay, next is a parfum version of one of the greats. Uh, and this was created by Mathilde Laurent in 2018. Uh, this is Declaration Parfum. Now, I really like this version you know, Declaration initially was a Jean-Claude Elena. He has that, you know, painting with watercolors vibe, right? Where everything is kind of see-through and light and ethereal, and but yet it's still kind of there. Um, Declaration Parfum fixes that. It takes that Declaration DNA, you know, the cardamom, the spices, um, the cumin, and uh, it in the woods, of course, in the base. And it adds this oriental leathery vibe and it amps up everything, okay? So everything that was a little bit lighter in the eau de toilette is heavier here. The leather is more. The cumin is more. You know, it's that kind of vibe. And um, I like it. I, I think uh, a lot of people just kind of pass this over. And uh, I think it's a good flanker. I think Cartier does good work anyways, but uh, yes, Declaration Parfum is a good one. I will be wearing that this year. Okay, um, my only original bottle of Opus from the Opus Emoirs um, Library collection. I have a new bottle coming, but it's not in this style. It's in the new style bottles, which look like the regular Emoirs bottles. But uh, this is called Emoirs Opus 11. Okay, so uh, I am not a fan of these bottles because they fall. Now, to their credit, they normally would sit in something that looks like this, so it wouldn't fall over, but this was a tester, so it didn't come with that. So um, it, it, it just plops over many a times. And, uh, but the fragrance inside is good. It's interesting. It's not as good as the new one that, that I have that's coming. 
Uh, but it is good, and I'm glad to have this because this secures me uh, the ability to forget about backing up Gucci Guilty Absolute. I can just have my one bottle and that's that. But uh, they both have this wood leather note, and this has marjoram, oud, and styrax. And it's very big. Uh, yes, it's synthetic oud, but it's very well done. And if you like Gucci Guilty Absolute, uh, they are two peas in a pod. I mean, you might even, like I said, uh, I'm not even going to worry about backing up Gucci Guilty Absolute because I have this. They they do almost the same thing. They smell very, very similar. Uh, okay, so that's 2018. And Amouage. So the other Amouage that came out in 2018 is the one I referenced earlier. It's this. Imitation Man. Look at the dent I put in this bottle. That's my dent. I'm proud of that dent. I've worn the shit out of this fragrance. I have worn the piss out of this fragrance. And it's damn good. Uh, it's Citron Fruits in the opening with nutmeg and black pepper, and then Turkish Rose, Iris, and Violet. Uh, Eugene called it like a dirty orris. Yes, there is a little bit of a dirty orris vibe. Um, but that floral heart turns into a leathery animalic dry down because there's myrrh, leather, vetiver, patchouli, and castorium. And the two main notes in the dry down are leather and castorium. And um, I, when I first smelled Eugene's fragrance, Le Dallaire Exquise, by Les Abstraits, this is the fragrance that hop, popped into my mind. Everyone else was saying Portrait of a Lady. I was saying Imitation Man. Uh, but they're different enough where, you know, you can definitely own both. Um, but the leathery, resinous, um, castorium, and as far as like new age castorium, like the new stuff, not the 70s and 80s when they could use the real thing and it was different back then but castorium nowadays um this is one of the best castoriums along with uh eugene's le dalleric squeeze and i actually did a this is not a top 10 ranked castorium video you can go check that out eugene's fragrance was way towards the top um okay Next, we're going to do, uh, we only have a couple left, actually, uh, three left. So next is an Aramis from 2018. I think this is discontinued, but I'm not 100% sure. It says it is being marketed by Estee Lauder, but I don't think so. I think this is discontinued. Uh, this is Aramis Tobacco Reserve. One of my favorite tobaccos. Actually, um, oh God, I can't wait to wear this in the cold. Um. I absolutely love this stuff. I think it's a shame that it's discontinued just because it came in this bottle. Uh, and I think Edward Fleischier is the perfumer, one of the all-time greats too. Uh, it's smoky, it's spicy, it's fruity. Uh, tobacco is basically what it is because it has black currant, which adds this fruity aspect to it, and tobacco leaf. And it's beautiful. Um, there is a Tonka bean note, a modern Tonka note, so it is a little sweet, but the hidden um, ingredient in this perfume that makes it, that really takes it from being good to great, is iris. The iris here, along with oak moss, but the iris here just, just adds this layer to everything. It powders everything up, you know? It's really, really a great tobacco. I love this stuff. Um, okay, next is a fragrance that I think some people like, some people hated. I'm on the like side. Uh, it's Frederick Mall and it's Music for a While from 2018. Carlos Benayim. What a career. I mean, think about it. Polo Green in 78. Dunhill's Icon in whatever it was, 15 or... Um, and then to put out a fragrance like this in 2018, I think that this is a take on a fougere because it has that la lavender, um, and it really feels like a fougere construction, like a modern fougere, like a, like a fougere with a twist. And that twist is the pineapple in the top. The pineapple is, the pineapple is just as good, if not better, than Aventus, when you just take that note, okay? Uh, and this, in warm weather, is a stunner, an absolute stunner, and it has amazing projection, longevity, all the stuff I never talk about. This stuff is a beast. Uh, okay, finally, 
And again, this is not ranked, but this is one of my most prized bottles. Uh, it's from the great house of Arige La Dore, and it is Russian Oud. This is impossible to find right now, by the way. Someone asked me the other day, how do I find a bottle? And I was like, man, cross your fingers and hope. I mean, all you can do is just continue looking and hope one comes up for sale and have the cash ready to go right then and there. Set aside your $600 or whatever you're going to pay for it and just be ready. Um, but yeah, it's discontinued. And what ended up happening is Russian Adam tried to make a part two and they just couldn't get, they couldn't get it right. So this is a one and done, you know, um, fragrance, unfortunately. But uh, yes, Russian Oud is very, very good. One of my favorite um, Oud fragrances ever, period. It has that lava-like uh, amber in the base. The amber creation in the base of this is one of the best ambers I've ever smelled, period. Forget Oud or any, you know, any, forget the fact this has real deer musk, castorium, you know, forget all that. Just the amber in the base. If you just take that one aspect of this fragrance, it's a knockout. You know, it's got frankincense, Indian myrrh, labdanum, birch tar, sandalwood, and cedar wood. Just beautiful. Um, so cozy, so enveloping. You know, it's like uh, wrapping yourself in a warm blanket that comes out of the dryer, you know what I mean? Like uh, it's still warm and you wrap it around yourself and it just has that uh, almost like a hug, you know, qualities of a hug. Russian Oud has that, It's so, but it, then on the other side, it has that contrast, which is a big thing in perfumery, contrast. The contrast on the other side of the coin is, um, you know, the, uh, the fact that it's got the animalic Oud, the real deer musk, the castorium, the things that kind of keep our as frag heads attention, but then it has that easy to wear lava like ambery, you know, flowing lava ambery dry down with chocolate. It's just beautiful. One of the best chocolate oods. Um, so there you have it 2018 in a nutshell. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, we're over an hour. So thanks to, the, thanks to everybody who supports me. We crossed over 2100 subscribers which is a big deal for me. I mean, uh, I don't make it a big deal, but I am. I, I keep an eye on it and I watch it uh, because it's a sign of growth of the channel. Uh, I don't uh, use it as a gauge of success because I have my own standards that I want to live up to, but I'm happy to see the channel continue to grow. I'm happy to see new faces. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I think we are making waves in the fragrance industry, whether they'll admit it or not. It was interesting. We were talking about a topic in the comments of my channel. And then uh, that night, one of the bigger channels, who I won't name, uh, did a stream where the um, question or the, you know, uh, the um, picture on the, uh, uh, on the stream that they were kind of promoting was about the topic we were having a conversation in the comments, me and somebody else, um, another subscriber. So I'm thinking that we've got some lurkers in the background. There's some people who, you know, they they may not say anything, but they're watching. Uh, and so to, ev to the regulars who always comment and subscribe, I very much appreciate the support. Honestly, uh, it really does lift me up and keeps me going. So cheers, guys. Hope everyone ever has a good evening. Hope you enjoyed the 2018 video. Let me know what your favorites are from 2018, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.